Good morning, church. How are we doing today? Are we doing all right this morning? Let's go in prayer to the Lord. And if you can, you can st uh, stand up with us. And let's pray. God, we just give you thanks this morning. We just want to say thank you, Lord, for who you are. We're thankful, God. We're thankful for for who you are, for that sacrifice you, you made on that cross. So we just thank you, Lord. We want to say thank you, Lord. Just begin to thank him just where you are. Just say thank you, Lord. If you, if you can think of something that he's done in your life, just begin to thank him. To tell him, thank you, Lord, for such and such thing. Just thank you, Lord. We just want to lift up your name in this place, God. I just want to lift up your name, God. We love you in this place, Lord. We love you in this place, Lord. I just thank you, God. We come with a thankful heart to your courts, Lord. And I pray that you would inhabit our praises this morning, God. Inhabit our praises, the, the praises of your people, Lord. Inhabit the praises of your people this morning, Lord. We just want to surrender everything that is bringing us down this morning, God. We just want to lift it up to you, God, and surrender it to you, Lord. Maybe we're going through a difficult season or a difficult time, God, and I pray that we would be able to lay it at your feet. We lay it all down at your feet, Lord. We lay it all down at your feet, Lord. Because you have done great things. Just give it all to you, Lord. We surrender our desires, our needs to you, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord. We thank you and we prophesy in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes and amen You will do great things God, you do great things Hero Oh, hero of heaven You conquer the grave You free it, recapt it And break every chain Oh, God You have done great We dance We dance in your freedom Oh our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. I love it all. Hallelujah, God. I'm 
unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah, God. And hallelujah, God. Above it all. Hallelujah, God. Unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Let's say it again. Hallelujah. And hallelujah, God. Above it all. Hallelujah, God. Unshakable.
Church of Living Hope. That was amazing. There is only one. There is only one. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And there's no way to the Father except through Jesus Christ. There is only one. I've never heard that song before. That was amazing. Anyway, I want to welcome everybody to Church of Living Hope this morning. If it is your first time here, we'd like to meet with you after the service in the foyer over there. Uh, somebody may have or should have given you a, uh, a, a welcome first time visitor card. You can fill that out and give it back to us. And uh, we have a gift waiting for you at the foyer. And we just want to welcome you. We want to connect with you. If it's your first time here, we just like to meet you and greet you and just get to know you. So just welcome to Church of Living Hope and all y'all that have been coming and keep coming back. I love you. And it's just such a blessing, this, this Thanksgiving holiday that just passed. I mean, I know we're supposed to be stretched, but that's a different kind of stretching right there. You know, and you got to be careful because in the holiday season, I hear like the average person could put on like 10 pounds very easily. So we got to have a, a special kind of discipline through this season. <laughs> it's all right. We'll burn it off. Anyway, uh, we have a couple announcements this morning. Um, Larry McFadden, I'd like to welcome him up here. I'll come down to you, Larry. Good morning. Yes, uh, Jackie couldn't be here today, but we wanted to read what's going to be going on this week here at the Planned Parenthood. Uh, I think all of y'all probably know that uh, uh, December 30th, I mean, November 30th and December 1st that the, the uh, Dobbs uh, versus Jackson case, the Mississippi case is going before the Supreme Court there. And uh, plant 40 Days for Life is calling for a time of fasting and prayer. And we're wanting to go before Planned Parenthood both Tuesday and Wednesday from 7A to 7P. We want 
invite anybody, anybody who feels led to come down and pray to come because this is a crucial time, guys. We're coming before a time. We might see Roe v. Wade come down. It's been nearly 49 years, and this time may be coming, but we need to bring this before the Lord. But anyway, like I said, this is going to be on Tuesday the 30th and Wednesday the 1st, 7A to 7P across the street from Planned Parenthood. And uh, you can sign up online or you can just come on down. That's fine. And I wanted to report, too, last Monday, Jackie believes she had a save last Monday. Um, she talked to a lady who was on the verge. She and her, I think it was her brother that came with her. And she was going to have an abortion. She canceled the appointment, guys. She changed her mind. And we praise God for that. And uh, so I just want, I'm just saying that to know your prayers make a difference. Our prayers truly make a difference. Thank y'all. That was amazing. Not that thing that just fell off the wall, but <laughs> this church has been standing a very long time. The gates of hell will not prevail. Um, you know, I keep hearing this lately, prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting. If we want to see the church move in power, like in the book of Acts, Prayer and fasting. It's time to see some signs and wonders in our age. I'm just saying. Um, we have another announcement with one of our uh, loved ones right here, Patricia Riley. We love you, Patricia. <laughs> you know, nobody can do this announcement better than her. Good morning, everybody. So, as most of you know, every year we adopt the children of the Smith County Jail inmates. And so, most of y'all have been very responsive already this morning, and we've got quite a few already adopted out, but see me in the foyer afterwards, and I have cards with the children's name and the guardian, and I'll give you the logistics when you come up there. But it's in two weeks, guys, on the 12th at 6 p.m., and that's not very long. And since it was a Thanksgiving holiday, we're going to go ahead and take more um, families on Monday and Tuesday that call into Calvary. So we'll have some more next week, too. And so just come up and adopt a child or six, <laughs> and uh, God bless y'all. So far, we had 40 families, 88 children. Wow. So wow. most of the families are just one child, which is unusual. But I do have three families of six children. But um, just come up. And I'll have some more next week. So I don't want anybody to feel left out, okay? <laughs> All right. This is an amazing opportunity for outreach. I remember last year when the families and the children came for their presence. And, man, the kids just love it. You know, we had, like, a snow globe thing set up. We're taking pictures of the kids, and we send the pictures into the jail to the fathers, you know. So it's just so special. And the mothers. We don't, we don't want to forget the mothers, for sure. Anyway, I have another special announcement. This was kind of, like, uh, not planned. But we have a birthday in the house. It's our pastor's birthday today. <laughs> Come on, David. He's back there being shy. Let's sing him happy birthday. This was totally unplanned. He may never let me do this again. But, <laughs> but we're that kind of church. You know what I mean? If we can't do this, what can we do? <laughs> happy birthday to you. Woo! Happy birthday. Awesome. I'm going to step up here and I'm going to pray for the offering. So there's a scripture that uh, we all know. It's on our little offering envelopes. It starts in Malachi chapter 6, verse 10. It says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven, 
and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And then it goes in verse 11. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you, for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be delightful, or be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. That is the word of God. That is a promise. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just pray a prayer of blessing over these tithes and offerings, Father God. We are a walking blessing in your sight, Father God. We just claim victory in your name, Father. Just bless this church and bless this community, Father God, and bless your church abroad, Father God. Bless these outreaches coming up, Father, and just, just, we just love you, Father. We thank you for your love and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, church, for wishing me a happy birthday. That was so kind and so generous of you. And now I am going to preach the Word of God, and I'm excited about that. In fact, I got a shirt for my birthday. Can you hold it up there? I need that shirt up here. This is serious business right here. <laughs> it says, help, I'm preaching and I can't shut up. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. Kyle got that for me. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about it, and I don't think I've ever preached on my birthday. You know, my birthday comes on the Sunday. Yeah, once a year. It, <laughs> It lands on a Sunday, I think, every five or six years, something like that. Yeah, it's a strange how it works. And, um, yeah, I wasn't the pastor that long ago, so I was just hanging out. So, here we are. Big birthday gift from God to be able to share with my church family on my birthday. That's awesome. I feel happy about that. That's really a, a gift. And I was even thinking about 
miracles, and that's what I want us to talk about this season, really, because today we're going to start a new series called The Christmas Miracle. We're jumping right into Christmas. I know it's not even December, but hey, we're jumping right in. (laughs) And I was thinking about these miracles, and you know, really, me being able to share God's word on my birthday is a miracle, an awesome miracle, an awesome, in every sense of that word, miracle of God. And, you know, 10 years ago, I was already a member of this church. I would have been a current student at Calvary Bible Institute, and I'm sure it was a wonderful birthday. 20 years ago, now we're starting to go back. I am not kidding about this. This is kind of a a sensitive moment here, kind of a vulnerable. I'm making myself vulnerable here. 2002, I barely remember that year at all. In fact, I've tried to figure out what I was doing in 2002, and I can't remember it at all. Let me tell you, me standing here before you is a miracle of God. We serve a mighty, mighty God of miracles. He is the Christmas miracle. So I'm going to give you a spoiler alert here. Jesus is the Christmas miracle. (laughs) Jesus is the Christmas miracle. And I think it's awesome and wonderful that here we are getting to celebrate Jesus and we get to so powerfully every year. And Christmas time is so special. It's so special for the world because, you know, Jesus really is getting a lot of coverage right now, whether people like it or not. (laughs) His name is right there in the middle of the holiday. Isn't that awesome? I just love that. I just love that. In fact, there's a, a guy that is a, he is a journalist, he's really a journalist. Now, now he's more of like an editor senior editor of a whole news outlet and he always signs his name with his name and then he writes Jesus is king every time and then when other places ask him questions about different things and they quote him they always end up writing Jesus is king in their quote. <laughs> he, says, he says, I just love it when people ask me for a comment on something because they inevitably write Jesus <laughs> on their news article. I love that. Isn't that great? Well, Christmas is the same way. And it, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Really, it really is a Christmas miracle. Now, I know, just like you, that there's been so many ways that people have secularized this holiday. I understand that. So I'm not dodging that. But it is all about Jesus, whether people accept it or not. (laughs) And it is... A miraculous time where Jesus' name, his story, his title is truly carried around the world. It's a wonderful time. 
It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> it's a special time of the year. It is so special. And I know that probably all of us have some sort of special memory relating to this time of the year. But that's not what makes it so miraculous, you know? Perhaps we could say that some of the fond things that we tend to enjoy come from the fact that we're celebrating Christmas. I, I love all the extra things that go along with Christmas, you know? All the making merry, love it. I love all the extra campfires. And those are kind of like small miracles. They really are. I, I love all the extra time with family. It's like winter causes the world to kind of slow down. Now, I have family in Wisconsin, and it slows down way slower up there than down here. Texas seems to just kind of keep going, you know. <laughs> they get real snow and real ice, and it's legitimately slow. But there is a sense that we slow down here. Things are a little slower. And all those things, I really believe, are miracles that point us, they're small miracles, but they point us to the greatest miracle, that's Jesus. And, and really, this time of year is a most wonderful time of the year because this is a time of the year when we can shine the light and the truth of Jesus into this world. We can be a part of many miracles. And we can be a part of the greatest miracle, which is salvation in somebody's life. And I'm believing, as we're talking about the Christmas miracle, who is Jesus, obviously, as we talk about this Christmas miracle, this Christmas season, I believe that God is going to do many miracles in our lives and in the lives of our community. Would y'all want that? Would y'all want to be a part of that? I know I would. Really, it's so neat because this uh, Hope at Christmas event that we're we're um, adopting, we're adopting these kids, that's a big miracle. That's a big miracle. That's one, that's a Christmas miracle. It, it's a, it's a special moment. I believe that through this season of Christmas, that God has special moments, special miracles in store for this community we can be a part of, that we can touch lives for eternity. So today, as talk, in talking about the Christmas miracle, I want to talk about how we should be expecting a miracle, expecting a miracle. Look at this text with me. It's in Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 3. We're going to start in verse 17, Acts chapter 3, verse 17. This is Peter standing up to preach. I, I, I chose text all from the book of Acts. Really, the book of Acts is where we're at now. <laughs> we're continuing this book. We're in chapter 2022. Or 21 still, yeah. Acts chapter 3. And Peter standing up and he says, Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. And this is a key text right here. 
But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets, that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet will be utterly destroyed among the people. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these days. You are sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, And in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, God, having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from your iniquities. Let's pray. Lord, we just pray. Lord, we want to expect you, just like we're hearing about in your word, that you were foretold. You were, you're coming to this earth, this thing that we celebrate at Christmas time, Jesus Christ coming into the world. It was foretold. It was prophesied about. It was spoken about. And it was told that it was going to happen. People were expecting this miracle. And Lord, I believe, Lord, this morning that faith can arise in this congregation to believe you for the miracle that you are. Lord, that faith can arise to believe you for the miracles that you want to do in our lives, for the miracles that you want to do in this community. Lord, I just pray in a fresh way, Lord, that we would be challenged. We would be challenged, Lord, that you would move in our hearts, that you would show us that there are miracles that you want to achieve through your body, through this church, through each and every one of our lives, Lord, and that we could be a part of these miracles that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. So this text really gets to the part of what we're saying this morning. Over and over, Peter talks about these prophets and these men of old that were telling that Jesus was going to come. See, that's a big, 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 big part of Christmas. A huge part of Christmas is the fact that Jesus came, but he came as a result of the prophecy of God. It really, his name is Jesus Christ. The Christ is the title. You know, it's probably Jesus Bar Joseph or something. I don't know what his real name would have exactly been. But we call him Jesus Christ because we are attributing the title Christ to him. He is the Christ. He is the chosen one. He is the Messiah. He is the Savior of the world. He is the one that came to die and purchase our souls for eternity. He came and paid the price for our iniquity. He came and paid for our salvation. Can we get a glory hallelujah? He is the Christ. And he was prophesied that he would come. It, it really started at the very beginning of the Bible. You know, Adam and Eve were the first people created by God, and they were perfect, but they sinned. 
and sin separates us from God. Separates us from God. There was only one way. There is only one way that we can be restored to a right relationship and fellowship with God. And Jesus is the one that made that possible. Period. And, and right there at the beginning, when Adam and Eve fell, there was a prophecy right there. It started these prophecies, and it started these foretellings that there would one day be one. We sang so powerfully about it this morning. There would one day be one who would be worthy. There would one day be one that would be perfect. There was one day be one that would come into the earth to make a way. He would come and become a man. We, we see that picture of that baby Jesus, and it's always so cute. Cute baby Jesus. But it's so big what was taking, taking place there. He came and to, to suffer and become a person to become a baby. He... he he came to take on human flesh and become one of us. And all throughout this Old Testament, and that's what I hope that y'all picked up on in that text, that Peter was, was telling everybody about, saying, look, this, Jesus didn't, didn't come as just this big surprise. He came because God said he was coming. God, God continued to, to tell us that he was sending his son, and he was coming. And he said it was foretold, it was, it was prophesied about. He, he said that there would be, that Moses talked about it. He said that the holy prophets talked about it, that there was this this time that would come that through repentance, it says this, that times of refreshing would come from the presence of the Lord. This miracle. This miracle of Christmas. Such a, a massive, massive thing, Jesus coming into the earth. There was something that I, I really want us to hear and see in this first message of this series is that so many through these prophecies were expecting Jesus to come. They were expecting Jesus. God desires us to live in expectation of him. Daily expectation. Daily expectation of his miracle, the miracle of him. The miracle of him. I talk with my kids, and it, I think having kids is such a miracle. It is. That's a miracle. Having children is, a, is, is such a beautiful miracle. Oh, it's beautiful. Having children is, is such a blessing, whether natural or adopted, whatever. It's, it's, a, it's a major thing. And having little kids, you know, my oldest is seven years old, and he's starting to really have dialogue, you know, and it's interesting how it just it levels up quickly, very quickly. Aiden and Joy, you're right on our tails. And all of a sudden it's like, man, I'm having like a detailed conversation with this kid. <laughs> and they're giving me their input about situation. So he's seven, so he we're like having some serious dialogue now. 
But having these little kids forces you to communicate at a whole new level. Because they'll ask you questions, and you're like, how do I answer this five-year-old kid? And they're asking questions about Jesus a lot, you know. We talk about Jesus. Jesus lives in our house. You know, we have five people that live in our house, but we really have six. And so, but now Christmas time is a big time. Again, take advantage of that with your families. This is such a great time to talk about Jesus. And such a, a wonderful time with your families, extended families, to talk about the Lord. This is really an excellent time of the year. And we're talking about Jesus, and they're, they're asking these questions about Jesus coming into the world. And sometimes we can, as believers, we can just think about it and know it in our heart and, and believe it and know it. But then they're asking me, well, how did Jesus come into the world if he's God how did he how did he come down and become a person and I'm like this is a miracle this is a massive miracle of God this is a massive Benevolent, you know that word, like good, good gift, a, ben, a benevolent act of God. <laughs> this miracle, this miracle of Christmas, but it doesn't stop at the story of Christmas. His miracles can happen every day. This miracle that he would come and become a man, yes, would die on the cross, yes, would raise from the dead, yes. The miracle that he wants to live in me. The miracle that he wants to be in the center of my marriage the, the miracle that he wants to be in the center of my family, that he wants to be the sixth person in my family, really the first. The miracle. And it's like he's saying to us this morning, are you expecting me? Are you expecting this miracle? See, when, when, when Peter's coming to these people, he's saying, look, y'all are supposed to be expecting this. Y'all are supposed to be expecting this. He's having to come to them and tell them about Jesus and about how Jesus was the Christ and how Jesus fulfilled these prophecies, how Jesus became a person and died on the cross and rose from the dead. And he said, why, why aren't you expecting this? This Jesus, what does he say here? He says this, that he may send Jesus who was preached to you before. You know what, what the worst part could be for us here in our daily lives is to not expect God for what he wants to do. To live, to really live in a sense of not expecting the miraculous. I love what Brandon said when he was doing the announcements and receiving the offering. He said that he was, we need to believe God now. For these miracles that God wants to do now. 
We need to be believing God and expecting the miracle. That's my question to us this morning. Because we're going to talk about miracles and we're going to talk about these miraculous aspects of Christmas. But if we aren't expecting God for the miraculous, why would it happen? (laughs) I know God moves in miracles even when people aren't expecting it. But there is a sense that God moves in faith and the expectation of his of his church and the activity of 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 him in the earth follows the faith of his people are we expecting a miracle i you have know, heard me share a lot of things about myself and my family and different things over the years. I think recently I shared about um, a time where I was feeling really sick and Dr. Google was like telling me I should have died the year before. And I was like, dude, my days are up. You know, that was the flesh, you know, flesh saying, man. And God really healed me. It was a miracle. I've I've talked about it before. I won't take it much at length now. But I've definitely been healed of different things. One time, that time I'm referring to now was very severe that that God really healed me from. And I've been having this pain in my elbow. You know, you keep having birthdays. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have a couple extra pains here and there. I am 39 years old, y'all. Yes. Hallelujah. I told, you know, Krista Krista gives me a hard time. She says, next year you'll be 40. I said, I'm going to be the most proud 40-year-old I've ever seen. I said, there's some things that get better with age, baby. (laughs) But anyway, 39, and I think I have... 39 pains. Anyway, the point of all that was this, that I've been having these pains like in my, I guess it's my tendons or something. I did some stupid thing. I don't know what I did. And I was just like holding it the other day and I was like, Realizing I hadn't even prayed about it. What in the world? I told you I was going to get vulnerable (laughs) this morning. How could I not be expecting a miracle? Could I get to a place where I wasn't really waiting on God? Christmas is the time where we celebrate Jesus coming into the world. We need to be believing God for the miracles that he's accomplishing in the world right now. We, we, I love to celebrate Christmas. We make serious Mary in the Herndon house. We are some Mary folk. But Christmas is not just a time for making merry. We love to make merry. It's great. But we need to believe God. He is the Christmas miracle, but there's a Christmas miracle that he wants to do in you and in me. And in our world. 
This, this hope at Christmas activity is so great, but let me tell you, it's a taste. It's, it's just a taste of what God wants to do and the miracles he wants to do. How many children do we have? 88 children that are children of incarcerated people in Smith County that we can touch with the gospel this Christmas. That's a big miracle, but it's just a taste. I just have that question for us again. Are we expecting a miracle? I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what's going on in it. I know some things that are going on in some of my friends' lives. But I don't know everything that's going on in everybody's life. But I know that God wants us to expect a miracle. I know he does. And as we begin to speak about Jesus... And as we begin to see his miraculous power that brings about salvation, I believe it's going to be life-changing. But it starts with expectation. I'm going to ask Anna to come up at this time. It starts with expectation. I want to read this, this text. Here. In Acts chapter 10, verse 34 through 43, it says this. Acts chapter 10, verse 34 through 43. Again, I love the book of Acts because it's just where we're at right now. It's so great. Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation who fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. I want to say, I want to say, that it could say every nation, that could say every community. That's a powerful Greek word there that's translated nation. Could be every community. I want to read this again, David Herndon version. I hope I'm not in heresy here. Verse 35. But every person in Tyler, Texas, who fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. Christ, he is Lord of all. Amen. Hallelujah. What a miracle of Christmas. This Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Peace through Jesus Christ, I don't know what kind of miracle that you need in your life or that your family needs in your life. Some of y'all just saw your families again and if, uh, during this Thanksgiving holiday, and maybe there's some new miracles that you realize are needed. But let me tell you something. There is hope. His name is Jesus. There is a miracle that's possible. Hallelujah. There is a miracle that is possible. We need to expect God. We need to expect God for this miracle. It says that, it says there's peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Let's go down all the way to verse 42. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets witness that through his name, 
Whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Stand with me this morning. Lord, we are believing you. Thank you that you are the miracle of Christmas. Lord, I don't want us to miss anything that you want to do this Christmas. And I thank you that we can preach Christmas, but we know this is really every day. And we, we want to believe you for miracles for, for forever. But I just pray here at this Christmas season, Lord, that we can really hear your heart. You are the miracle. The, the miracles that are needed in our world come from the true miracle that is you. They come from you. They come because you are Lord. Because of your position, Lord, and I just pray in every person's heart this morning as we are going into this Christmas season celebrating you Lord I just pray that you would be exalted and be Lord in every person's life here Lord that we would be walking imitators of Christ that we would be walking people that expect the miraculous that expect your miracle to take place Lord maybe there's some of us here this morning that really our faith needs to be stirred up in, in a godly way that, that, that our belief system needs to be adjusted in a godly way Lord, that we would walk circumspectly like the Bible says, but we would walk in expectation of you. Expectation of your presence and your power to work in us and in our families and in this community. I just pray that if there's some here this morning that have been discouraged or just their faith is weak, I pray this morning, Lord, that you would speak to them, Lord. I pray that you would encourage them in a mighty way. I pray that that you would stir their heart in a mighty way and show them that you are the miracle of Christmas. You're the miracle of, of everything. You're the miracle of life. You're the miracle of truth. You are God and God alone. Lord, I just pray that if there's anyone here that really not just hasn't had faith lately, but they really just haven't been walking with you at all. Lord, I pray that this morning would be a morning that they could repent from sin and turn back to you. You said that when we repent from sin and turn to Jesus Christ, that there would be times of refreshing that come from the presence of the Lord. That's a true miracle. Maybe they think, oh, I've just been doing sinful things and I'm just apart from God. God won't work in my life. Show them that you are the God of miracles and they can turn to you this morning. They can turn to you this morning. I'm speaking to somebody this morning. Just raise up your hands right now. 
Just touch, touch the Lord. He's the God of miracles. If there's anybody here that needs a miracle right now, and, and you need to expect God for that miracle, just like my, sh- my elbow, I'm just reaching out and I'm just touching him for a touch, for, a, for that miracle. Lord, I'm believing you. You are the God of miracles. Lord, I just want to live in expectation, expecting you for who you said that you are, that you are the God of miracles. Lord, we love you, Lord. I just want us to have a time where we can respond to you, Lord. And I just pray that you would move in this church by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. I just want to open up the altars. You can pray here or pray um, at your chair. But I'm going to have Anna sing. And let's just respond to the Lord and ask him to, to give us that expectancy for miracles this season. faith arise in spite of what I see Lord I believe but help my unbelief I choose to trust you no matter what I feel let faith arise let faith
Yes, we believe, Lord. Yes, we believe, Lord. Let's just sing this together. We're still praying and believing for miracles. But let's just recognize the source of those miracles right now. Jesus.
Amen. Praise Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Savior born into the world. Let me just bless you as you go this morning. Lord, may you bless them and keep them and cause your face to shine upon them. Lord, that may we shine your light during this season. May we take all these really miraculous extra opportunities that we're afforded to this season to talk about you and to lead people to you. Thank you, Jesus. And we just bless you and bless this congregation in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping with us. We will see you again Wednesday at 7 is our, our midweek service. And then we have a Spanish service Friday at 7. Thank you.